Hello students, I am here to discuss to you with you about the types of lighting, requirements, how to measure this lighting and methods of artificial lighting. Light has been always considered sacred and special in our culture. It is a primary requisite of light, basic of all living system and an important element for life. Any form, color or texture nor any enclosure of interior space would be visible only with the help of adequate lighting. Lighting a space is an important element in determining the beauty and comfort of the home. The major objectives of this study is to understand the importance of lighting, to gain knowledge on measurement and requirements of lighting, to become aware on the types of lighting and to suggest lighting fixtures for various rooms. Importance of lighting. The purpose of lighting design is to illuminate the interior environment, allow the users to perform tasks with appropriate speed, accuracy and comfort. A well lighted room can ease tensions, help to create harmony, make reading and TV watching a greater pleasure, heighten the enjoyment of furniture, painting and rugs. Proper illumination can make a simple decorated room seem far more exciting than its budget might suggest. Well used light, camouflage or enhance the areas. Lighting sets moods and creates impression. It provides safe circulation within the space. Lighting encourages a feeling of relaxation and comfort. It creates a sense of spaciousness. It is a key to efficient building design. Good lighting supports favorable emotional reactions and also affects the perception of any room. Measurement of lighting. A light can be measured as foot lambert or foot candle. A foot candle or foot lambert is the amount of light thrown by one candle on a square foot of surface. It is equal to one unit of luminous flux measured against the luminous intensity of one candle. Lux is equal to 1 lumen per square meter. The lighting requirement recommended for various activities is given below. Kitchen activities for sink we require 70 foot candles. Range and work surfaces 50 foot candles are required. For laundry activities it is 50 candles required. For reading at any location for prolonged reading we require 70 foot candles and for casual period we require 50 foot candles. For sewing we may require 100 foot candles. For grooming like shaving and makeup we require 50 foot candles of light. Table games require 30 candles. General illumination require 30 foot candles. Entrances, hallways and landing we require 10 foot candles. Living room uh, dining and family room we require 10 foot candles and library and game or recreation we require another 10 foot candles. This is the watts equal to foot candles. For example, 25 watts is equal to 220 lumens of foot candle. The same way 40 watts bulb is equal to 425 foot candles. 60 watts bulb is equal to 720 foot candles and 100 watts bulb is equal to 1380 foot candles. In the same way in the case of fluorescent bulb 20 watts is equal to 970 foot candles and 40 watts is equal to 2440 foot candles. There are two sources through which we obtain light. They are natural light and artificial light. Natural lighting is when we harness the light given out by the natural elements in the environment such as that of sun, moon. Natural light may be provided by walls, windows, ceiling windows and roof windows. Thus, daylight is such an important factor in the appearance of a room. Sources of artificial lighting. There are five common sources of artificial light. They are incandescent bulb, fluorescent tube, CFL bulbs, HID and LED lights. 
incandescent light. In an incandescent lamp, light is produced by heating a tungsten filament which is highly resistant with an electric current until it glows. Incandescent light contains a continuous warm mellow color spectrum. It produces heat and is costly. This lighting is flattering and best for warm mood lighting. These lamps are available in a wide range of wattages. As the tungsten burns off, the halogen reacts with the tungsten and creates a bright light. Fluorescent light. In a fluorescent lamp, light is produced by an arc between two electrodes inside a glass tube filled with very low pressure mercury vapor. The arc or discharge produces ultraviolet invisible radiations in wavelength that excite or activate the lamp. The phosphorus fluoresces glows convert the ultraviolet energy into visible light energy. Fluorescent light is a relatively shadowless even light making it ideal for general lighting of environments where task lighting would be impractical or undesirable. Compact fluorescent lamps that is CFL bulbs were more initially more expensive. They consume one fifth of the power and has a lifetime up to 13 times longer than incandescent lamp. CF lamps also offer a choice of colors and degrees of warmth. High intensity discharge lamps are high pressure electric discharge lamps. In general, their advantages include high efficacy, long life and lamp shade similar to incandescent. HID lamps have been used primarily for industrial application and outdoor lighting. LED lights. LEDs have many advantages over incandescent light sources including lower energy consumption, longer lifetime, improved physical robustness, smaller size and faster switching. They are more energy efficient and have fewer environmental concerns linked to, to their disposal. However, they are more expensive than CF lamps. From the point view of surface, three types of lighting are felt necessary, namely general, task and accent lighting. General or ambient lighting, light which were used generally to light up the room are now known as ambient or general lighting like the wall lights, chandeliers, etc. It must be sufficient to ensure safety of movement and should be of high level for simple task. It covers undefined areas of a room with a soft level of light. The general lighting should be provided in various intensities. Ambient lighting provides a diffuse spread of illumination which comes from an indirect source of lighting. Task lighting, it is obtained with a fixture that illuminates a work surface where a visual activity takes place with direct light. Task light offer high intensity lighting without high general illumination. Task light is produced in a particular places usually by portable floor and table lamps but also by straight or curved lighted rods and by lights behind ground glass that is flushed with the wall. Accent lighting. Accent lighting chiefly fills an aesthetic need, a spotlight dramatizes uh, or highlights an art object. Accent sources given local rather than general illumination. They are supplementary to the general source. The effect of accent lighting is instantly appreciated when one enters a room with much sparkling light. Down lighters, up lighters and wall washers can also become accent lights. Type of lighting fixtures. Movable lighting fixtures or non-architectural lighting. The movable lighting fixtures are table lamps, floor lamps and small specialty lamps. They are easy to buy, easy to take along when one moves. Table lamps serve a source of light. They also represent individuality and style. At the same time, it is available in different varieties. Mobility and ease of installation add on to the appeal of such lamps. Floor lamps offer great flexibility. The traditional floor lamp serves as a reading light or as a source of soft ambient light. 
surface mounted fixtures or architectural lighting. Surface mounted fixtures are integral to most home lighting designs as they are installed either on walls or on the ceilings. They provide general illumination in traffic areas such as landings, entries and hallways where safety is a consideration. Recessed ceiling fixtures are used to provide illumination without the intrusion of a visible fixture especially in rooms with low ceilings and sleek lines. In areas where there is enough space between the ceiling and the roof above recessed fixtures are used. Canisters set into the ceiling cast pots of light downward. Mini lights and strip lights for fun as well as for effective task lighting mini lights and strip lights are used. In order to provide very good effect in high lighting, high windows and other architectural features this type of lighting could be used as they also add color along with splash of light. Track lighting it offers great versatility of installation as they are available in varying lengths. Luminous panels, they are strips of lines of lights usually fluorescent over which glowing glass or plastic translucent panels are placed. A light placed behind a built-in or portable feature represent built-in indirect lighting. Cornice lighting, a light behind a board mounted into the ceiling washes light down onto the wall. Valence lighting, a light used over the top of windows washes both the ceiling and the window treatments. Bracket lighting, up and down. Bracket lighting mounted lower on the wall washes the upper and perhaps lower wall with the light. A light placed just below the ceiling has the board or deflector beneath it. Soffit lighting in a, used in a kitchen. A light built into the soffit shines downward from the top of the cabinet overhead. Soffit lighting can be also used in a bathroom. Soffit lighting provides even illumination for personal grooming. Fixed and adjustable lighting. This includes various luminous that are fixed or set into the ceiling called recessed luminous and those that are adjustable. Adjustable luminous can be recessed or surface mounted. Now we will see about the lighting fixtures to be provided for different activities. Though the type of lighting required is different, it is the kind of fixture or shades of the lamp that provide different types of lighting. They are direct, indirect, direct indirect, semi-direct and semi-indirect. Direct lighting, it has the greatest quantity of light is obtained by a direct fixture. It concentrates light at the desired surface and the minimum amount of lighting is lost in transmission. Down lightings are fittings designed to direct light straight downwards. The effect is to evenly illuminate the horizontal surface below. Indirect light. Indirect lighting is produced by a light source that is hidden. The light is directed to a ceiling, to a cove or to another surface from which it is reflected back into the room. Indirect lighting creates almost no shadows when it is used next to the ceiling and it is ideal for general illumination. Indirect lighting reflected down from the ceiling tends to raise the ceiling height by creating a visual illumination. Direct indirect lighting or general diffused, a fixture that has bulbs both inside and outside the reflector. As some table and floor lamps do produce a direct indirect or general diffused light. Semi-direct lighting, in semi-direct fixtures 60 to 90 percent of the light is directed down to the work surface and the remaining amount is directed upward. Semi-indirect lighting. Semi-indirect lighting directs 60 to 90 percent of the light towards the ceiling or an upper wall using the ceiling as the main reflective source. The other 40 to 10 percent is directed toward the workplace. Now we will see about the factors which affect the illumination in a room. 
Our ability to see well is affected not only by the amount of light available for illumination, but also by the following factors that is brightness, contrast, glare, diffusion and color. Brightness, it refers to how much light energy is reflected by a surface. The degree of brightness of an object is in turn depends on the color value and the texture of its surface. Contrast, contrast between an object and its background is especially critical for visual tasks that require the discrimination of shape and contour. Glare, glare is a transmission or reflection of light in such a way that the eye gets an unpleasant sensation. Lighting can produce two kinds of glare, discomfort and disability glare. Discomfort glare may be caused by an over bright source of light or too much contrast between an object and its background. Glare also results when bright light falls on a polished or glossy surface and is reflected from the surface to the eye. Diffusions The soft light provided minimizes the contrast and shadows. Diffuse lighting is useful for general vision. However, directional lighting relieve dullness by providing visual accents. Color. The interaction of light and color is a subtle but powerful force in planning lighting for an interior. Colors containing a lot of white reflect larger amount of light and darker color absorbs light. Requirements of an ideal lighting. Steadiness of the source of light. There should be no appreciable fluctuation or flickering of light which overstrains the eye so that the source of light remains stable. Elimination of glare may be remedied by placing the source of light high above the level of the eye so that it is not ordinarily seen and screening the light by means of suitable shade or interposing frosted or opaque glass, silk or celluloid etc to diffuse and soften the light so that glare is eliminated. Avoidance of shadow. Inconvenient shadows can be avoided by proper shading of source of light using light colors on walls and ceilings which reflect and diffuse light in all directions providing a general mild light to illuminate the entire room using one or more stronger lights in addition in proper places for specific purpose such as reading, sewing etc. Sufficiency. Sufficient illumination to suit the nature of the visual task for comfort of the eye and efficiency of a particular visual task is in proper degree of illumination is required. Non-productive of excessive heat. Heat is great disadvantage in a tropical country like India, particularly in summer. Therefore, the light source should be properly shaded whether by natural or artificial means so that do not produce heat. Minimum consumption of oxygen. Any source of light necessarily consumes oxygen from the air. This factor needs to be kept in mind while choosing the kind of light for a room. Now we will discuss about the factors influencing selection of lighting. The various factors that influence their choice are as follows. Function. One of the primary consideration is how the fixture would direct the light. Make sure that directional fixtures have enough maximum wattage of bulb for the task performed. Size. Fixtures on display will often look smaller in the store than that they will look in the homes. Make sure that it is the right size chosen. Design. Here personal preferences and taste would guide the choice. Manufacturers offer families of fixtures available as spotlights, pendants, track lights and ceiling fixtures. This offers a sense of decorative continuity by using similar fixture. Flexibility. Because taste, habits and technology often change, flexibility is one important consideration. Movable or adjustable lamps are long time favorites. Cost. Purchase price and operating cost are very important in fixture selection. Maintenance. 
to operate efficiently all fixtures should be cleaned regularly using a fixture which is easy to clean and provide better accessibility towards changing light bulbs should be considered space and atmosphere the space to be lit and used should be objectively is assessed based on which quantum of light should be analyzed focus and detail the main feature to be highlighted in the room should be assessed these might be architectural or decorative tasks activities to be performed in the room and requirement of special lighting should be taken into consideration practicalities restrictions to the installation of new wiring should be taken into account control finally technical details such as placement of control switch number of switches and power points required in the room requirement of dimmers and different types of circuits needed must be considered now we will see into the details of the lighting that is required for different location or activities the amount of light required varies according to the needs of or the functions of an area and rooms in a residential area and commercial area the need for lighting and the amount of lighting will be different from the place to place these differences for the various areas are discussed entrance and passage lighting should be provided good front door and porch lighting the door itself the keyhole the ground immediately in front of the door and the steps or steps leading up to it should be clearly visible one can create a welcoming atmosphere by brightly lighting or indirect ceiling light that can give brilliant medium or subdued light as required living room lighting the main criteria of any living room is that it should be a relaxing inviting space flexible for all that goes on but nevertheless with a definite style the lighting in one's living room would not be completed without some highlights or paintings or on the crystal in one's cabinet apart from its stylish appeal accent lighting also provides a certain amount of ambient light spotlights meet the need very well when used effectively dining room lighting a ceiling lighting fixture is sometimes the most practical solution for lighting a dining room the use of low level general illumination will create a serene atmosphere bright overhead lighting tends to have too harsh a character of for pleasant dining room lighting a hidden spot light can be placed to throw extra light on the table candle light is pleasant for the dining table because of it softens the light bedroom lighting bedroom lighting must be planned with more attention to the needs of the specific user than lighting for general living areas apart from sleeping the bedroom introduces a multiplicity of lighting requirements such as for reading either in bed or in an armchair dressing in front of a long mirror studying or writing letters eating viewing television sewing etc general lighting is needed in a bedroom to for orientation purposes and in order to find things in cupboards children's room lighting a child's bedroom should be furnished with a well lighted desk long harsh shadows as well as glaring unscreened lamps should be avoided similarly narrow beam spotlights which are often used to provide decorative effects in the areas of the home are not recommended in the children's room bathroom lighting a general ceiling lighting may be sufficient for a bathroom several overhead fixtures could be provided for medium size or large size baths and especially for those with sectioned areas such as bathtub shower and toilet the most critical lighting in the mirror area of the bath center is the basis for good grooming the most efficient light used to make up a person's face is to use three fixtures one on either side of the mirror and overhead kitchen lighting general lighting for a kitchen should be well distributed uniform and as a shadowless as possible with special lighting for major work areas 
pantry, wall cabinets or shelf. Mounted brackets can be installed as per the requirement. Reading room lighting. Lamps must have a proper quality and quantity of illumination for maximum concentration and pleasure of reading. It should be placed so that the light falls comfortably on the open page. Powerful uplighters, downlighters or the general lighting may be used with task lights as required. Lighting the stairways. Stairways should be well lit to prevent accidents. Switches at both ends should be provided for convenience. Utility or laundry area. It needs plenty of well diffused general lighting. For added security, illumination on all the sides of the house is essential. To conclude, lighting is an important aspect for comfortable living. Owner's taste and the knowledge in lighting reflect the type and amount of lighting provided in a home. It is relatively easy to focus sufficient light on work surfaces and to provide for some kind of general illumination, but a balanced combination of natural and artificial light throughout the home or commercial space need thoughtful planning and its execution. This is a challenge for every individual. Theoretical knowledge with practical experience will help one to succeed in the venture of lighting and interior.